Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, July 10th, 2020. I hope that you have had a good week, a week of um, just taking full advantage of the things that you have and um, running with them. Um, one of my cousins posted a, well, retweeted someone about how to have a better day. Um, one of the things was exercise. Um, one of the other things, well, two of the things are exercise. Another was just recognize what you have control over and control that. Um, but I have something even better than a retweet from someone saying uh, six things you can do to have a better day. I have Psalm 27 this morning for you, and um, I'm going to read through a few of the verses um, as I just desire to get these videos short enough that people don't get tired while watching them. Um, I'm going to read Psalm 27, a few of the verses. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 4. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only I, do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Verse 7, Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, Seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Do not. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to, my, to, the, to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I want to point out in this psalm where it is that David, the mighty warrior, the one who is able to kill lions and bears, the one who is able to kill a giant, the one who slayed his ten thousands, whereas the other great warriors only slayed their thousands, where David was placing his confidence. And this was where David grew in strength. And right now... Um, there's a lot of emotions and everything across this country. Um, as, as a coach, I get emails about what's the state of coaching um, from the, the levels that are sent down to me. And so as a pastor, I, I'm in circles where I'm talking with other pastors and hearing different things. And um, looking at economic situations, there's a lot of things that can cause a heart to to roll and to to feel at um, unease. And there is a lot, as we look around this country, a lot of lack of peace, a lot of um, unrest, a lot of injustice. And I want to just help us to have a, a cornerstone and a foundation upon which we will launch into thinking about everything. Because in Psalm 27, David has a twofold question of whom of whom shall I be afraid who should I who should cause fear in me and the reason why he asked this question is he says the Lord is my light and my salvation the Lord is the stronghold of my life and I want you to really think about this who is the stronghold in your life who is the one that gives you confidence is is it really the Lord or is it the circumstance and the situation upon which you find yourself. A lot of us say we trust in the Lord, but do we really? Um, think about Job and how the accusations of Satan to God of like, he doesn't actually trust you. He's just really happy because he's got a healthy family, he's got financial wealth and a prestigious situation, and he's personally got his health. And the Lord said, look, I mean, progressively over the book, you can take away these things from him and he's still going to worship me. 
right now, 2020, here's my question. On July 10th, when things are being taken away from us, whether by government, whether by disease, whether by whatever thing you want to try to insert that it's taking it away from you, where's your confidence? Where's your heart? Where's your desire? What are you looking at? Because Jesus Christ is more valuable than any situation you find yourself in. Jesus Christ, you know, he, he says it's, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet lose his soul? Psalm 27 is a discussion of having the focus upon Jesus and having the confidence driving itself from there. And I, I need this reminder because I, I frequently will place my confidence in job security or family health or how much is in a bank account or access to food. Um, and just think about your confidence. In the middle of all the stress of chapter of Psalm 27, in the middle of the chaos and the confusion, says, my heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. It's easy to think you're good, but you really do need to seek the Lord's face. The Lord's face where it talks about who are you and are you seeking me? Are you desiring to be as I have called you to be? You know, the, the laws of the Old Testament, no one could keep them perfectly, but they were meant to teach us about holiness and purity, about who God is and how Israel could become a light to the other nations. We read the New Testament, you read what Paul says um, a Christian should be like in the book of Colossians and, and in Ephesians and Philippians, and it really is a person, would, when they are seeking the face of the Lord, they are actively living out a life of holiness. But it all goes down to the confidence that someone should have is in the goodness of the Lord. And when we wait upon the Lord, that is whenever we get strength. And that is whenever we take heart. And that is whenever our confidence is bolstered. And so, if you feel as though you do have enemies surrounding you and accusations and malicious things coming at you, as David did in Psalm 27, the question is, are you trusting in the Lord for true vindication? And as so as uh, Revelation chapter 6 has, the, um, there has been people for millennia waiting and asking the Lord, how long until we are vindicated? And the Lord will vindicate the people who are true to his word and have sought his face. So, my challenge, Friday, July 10th, 2020, to those who call themselves Christians, are you seeking the Lord's face, and are you placing your confidence in Him? Because if you have fear, which we all frequently encounter, ask yourself, why? Is it because your confidence is being shaken? And if your confidence is being shaken, if it's truly Christ, if it's truly, truly the Lord, truly the work of the Holy Spirit that you are placing your confidence in, it can take any shaking as Jesus talked about in the parable of the firm foundation, how the house built upon the solid rock, it's not shaken by the storms of life. So right now, what are you trusting in? Because you and I, if we trust in our own works, our own righteousness, our own socioeconomic situation, our own geographic location, all of those things can be upended. But do you know what will never be upended? the righteousness of God. And we can have that righteousness and that hope if we have confessed our sins and proclaimed Jesus as Lord and said we will follow him and him alone. Repent of our sins, follow Jesus, and we will enter into his kingdom with his promises that cannot be shaken and our confidence will be in him and it becomes instead of a temporary temporal hope which is any hope that we have in anything that is currently now whether it be education finances uh, socioeconomic family situation all those are temporal 
but the eternal confidence that we gain whenever we trust in Jesus, that lasts forever. So, what is your confidence in? Because if your confidence is in Jesus and you're seeking his face, that then can cause you to look at the situations that might feel like they're shaking you a little bit differently. So, I love you all. Have a great day. Today is the end of the week. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Stay smart. We need to be conscious of other people, and let's be the people that God calls us to be as Christians.